So when it comes to, to getting older, adults uh, to exercise or engage in physical activity, we need to consider the fact that most older adults are not meeting the recommended requ requirements to reap the benefits of uh, the, that physical activity or exercise, right? So that on average is is very true statement. And we all have people in our lives that we can, we can sort of see and witness. And we've all come across and, and cross paths with individuals um, who, who are older or, or later in their life who would fit within that realm of like, ah, oh, man, like if you just, if you just did this a couple times a week, I, I know you'd feel so much better um, and be able to not have your health be a limiting factor in your life, um, or at least give yourself an opportunity for your health not to, to be a limitation, right? Sometimes we're out of control with that. You know, we don't, we don't always have the say, right? Some of us are more fortunate than others when it comes to that. But um, with, with all that in mind, I did want to bring up a, a 2020 study here um, called, uh, or they, the title of the study is called Pragmatic Exercise Recommendations for Older Adults, The Case for Emphasizing Resistance Training, right? And in this paper, the researchers basically make the compelling case for strength training being a pragmatic solution for maximizing health benefits for older adults. Because up to this point, the really, really the only thing that, you know, and I, I again, I did a lot of research for the book uh, on this subject and read a, read a lot of papers read a lot, a lot of stuff about it. And the most common recommendations a lot of times have to do with um, strictly doing aerobic exercise um, or like stretching and, and things like that. Um, and as we, we know and learn more about strength training, um, strength training does a really good job at, at aiding in the positive increase of things like mobility and your ability to, to move uh, and be limber and um, to be more agile and be able to take more of everyday life uh, as it comes. And it also does a great job at creating positive aerobic adaptations, right? And so one of the things that these researchers made the case for was what is the right so so time typically or or the energy the amount of energy an older adult has to dedicate towards something that's physically active is is more limited right it's like okay i don't i only have this much time or this much energy each week to sort of give to this and so we have to start to make some some really informed decisions of like well, what's the best bank for our buck here like where are we going to get uh brain uh, positive brain adaptations, neurological adaptations, muscle coordination adaptations, strength and muscle adaptations, adaptations where um, bone health will be restored or at least maintained, um, mood, uh, anxiety, depression, rates will, will go down with this activity, especially when used in conjunction with uh, aerobic activities too, right? So I'm not saying like don't do aerobic activity as an older adult, but if you're going to choose one thing, it's like, hey, I'm just going to do one thing. I can't do all the things. I'm just going to do one thing. Then strength training is that thing that I would highly, highly encourage for you to consider or just some form of resistance training in general, right? So uh, I, I want to quote this paper um, uh, here because over the next, they basically go on to say like over the next 40 years, right? The next 40 years, the number of adults over 65 years of age will more than double in the United States from 46 million to 98 million. And in this context, the, the importance of habitual exercise as it relates to healthy aging cannot be overstated. And I, I mean, if there's a statement that I fully agree with, it's that, right? Like we got to get people on board mm -hmm. or just introduced to this, uh, to this activity or the, the, the concept of activity and physical exertion in general because all of the benefits, right? And, and adding to that, there is an overwhelming amount of evidence that lifelong exercise can delay the onset of um, at least 40 known chronic conditions and diseases, right? So I, my closing question to you guys here is, if you knew that there was an activity that you could perform a few times a week, that would do that, that would, uh, would help delay the onset of at least 40 chronic conditions and diseases, would you do it? And it's like, I hope your answer is some form of yes. <laughs>